Good evening, madam. May I help you? I don't know. My name's Fairstone. Lindy Fairstone. I've got an urgent message telling me to come here. Ah, oh, yes. Inspector Nugget. He's waiting for you in the lounge. Inspector Nugget? Yes. The great detective? Yes, madam. Nugget of the yard. Please, ladies and gentlemen, when we are all here, now settle down. Ah, Miss Fairstone. Inspector Nugget? Of the yard, yes. Please take a chair. What's all this about? That's exactly what you want to find out. Huh? Why are you all here to assist me in investigating a mystery? A body has been pulled out of a lake. A body? A perplexing affair. There were no signs of violence. The victim had no reason to take his own life. Yet no weapon has been found which might suggest... Murder. Foul play. Do we know it? Are we There's somebody important? Yes. As a member of that public whom you all serve. What have we got to do with it? Yeah. Yeah. With my consummate forensic skill, I intend to show that each one of you came into the contact with the victim during his last hours. By means of my infallible deductive methods, I intend to prove that behavior was the missing weapon. The weapon which consigned the unfortunate Mr. Hapless to the icy waters of the lake. <gasps> what is it, Miss Fairstone? Poor Mr. Hapless. I can't bear to think of him being dead. Ah. So you remember him? Poor Mr. Hapless, indeed. <laughs> I remember Mr. Hapless. Well, Mr. Pilbury, since you were the first to see him on that fateful day, perhaps you could tell us what sort of a person he was. Oh, I do like to be beside the seaside. Oh, I do like to be beside the sea. Da 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 Beside the seaside, beside the sea. Now, let's see. Yeah. Inoculations, shoe shop, mother's pension. Hmm. Yes? Uh, Mr. Hapless. Yes? Uh, telephone engineer. Hey, you wanted a new extension, sir? Oh, yeah, yeah uh, well, I completely forgot. Um, I, I'm, I'm going away on holiday. Oh, lucky man, somewhere nice. Yeah, ephemera. Abroad. <laughs> Sunshine, huh? Yes. So, do you, uh, do you think you could come back another time? Look, it'll only take me a minute, man. Promise I shan't get in your way. All right, then. Yes, yes, come in, come in. Uh, Thank you very much. It's uh, up in my mother's bedroom, first on the left. I've got some coffee on the go. Would you like a cup? Yeah, thanks, man. Yes. Coffee. He was a nice bloke, as I remember. I see. An ordinary, pleasant, unassuming member of the public. Well, thank you, Mr. Pilbury. I don't think I need to detain you any longer. Thanks. There must be some sort of mistake. Sister? The hapless I knew was difficult and truculent. The sort of patient I can well do without. Difficult in what way? Well, he'd come in for an inoculation against a femirensa. And I can tell you, I didn't much like his attitude from the start. Next! Over there. A 
Say Marenza, right? Yes. Roll is in now. Um, is this absolutely necessary? I, I find injections... You think health regulations are there just for fun, do you? No, I was only asking. Yes? Well, do you think perhaps there's a pill I might be able to take? I don't think I'd give it to you if there were. Look, I... You I want this injection, or don't you? I'm a very busy woman. Yeah, and a very rude one. You ought to be more polite. I treat you just the same as everybody else. <laughs> I get them like that all day. Just plain awkward. I see. Could it be then that we have two Mr. Haplesses? The one an affable and accommodating person, the other a bad tempered troublemaker. Looks like it, Gaff. I think not. What do you say, sister, if I told you that the man who came into your surgery was the very same obliging man who had just been visited by Mr. Pilbury? I'd say he had a personality change. Exactly. A man with two personalities. The personality of Mr. Pilbury and the personality of Sister Cartridge. I thought we were talking about a Mr. Hapless. Well, indeed we are. It was a different behaviour of each of the two towards him that caused Mr. Hapless to behave in two such contrasting ways. My first and very simple point. Behaviour breeds behaviour. Of course, that's what I'm always saying. It costs nothing to be friendly and it helps make other people friendly. And being unfriendly helps make people unfriendly. <clears throat> Put it in a nutshell, the way people behave towards you is usually dictated by the way you behave towards them. Behaviour breeds behaviour. Well, I may have been a bit short with Mr. Hapless, but as I said, I'm a very busy woman. May I serve tea, Inspector? Thank you, Mr. Mann. But it doesn't exactly make me guilty of murder, does it? Ah. Oh. Would you like me to call the police, sir? Not quite yet, I think. Anyway, it's just the way I am. I can't help it. A common misconception, sister. Your behaviour isn't something you're born with, you know. It's not a constant like your, your gender or the colour of your eyes. It's a variable. It's like a hat you wear. It's a performance, a performance you choose to put on. Load of rubbish. Oh, right, man. I mean... Some people are impossible to begin with. You've no choice how you behave with them. I wonder if you're right, Mr. Figgis. Of course I'm right. Mr. Welt. Yes? Slipshod Shoes Limited. Oh, yes. Mr. Hapless wasn't in a particularly good mood when he came to your shop. Still smarting from Sister Cartridge's manner as much as from her needle. How did you react to his behaviour? Well... I do apologise. I'll send them back to the manufacturers at once. But I'm going on holiday in a minute. I want them replaced now. I'm sorry, sir. We don't stock summer lines at this time of year. Why not? There's no demand for them. But there's a pair in the window. Yes, sir. They're for display only. Get them out. They're not your size. How do you know? I put them there. I want to see the manager. I am the manager. Well, then heaven help the shoe business. Keep your perishing sandals and drop dead. And drop dead yourself! Drop dead, Mr. Weld? Well, that's what he said to me. I wouldn't be in your shoes, mate. They fall apart for a start. Shall I call the police now, sir? Not just yet, Mr. Manners. Look, I apologise for his wretched sandals, didn't I? He was just out to be abusive. Yes, but you was abusive back, mate. We'll come to your evidence in a moment, Mr. Figgis. You see, Mr. Welch, you had a choice. Did I? A moment of choice, when you can either be as rude back to him as he was to you, or... Well, I suppose I could have gone on being pleasant in order to get him to be pleasant back. Exactly. The professional approach, which is often the productive approach. You might have gained yourself a valuable customer. Now, let's see where your moment of choice came. But uh, uh, there's a pair in the window. Yes, sir. They're for display only. Get them out. There. That's where you chose to snap back when you could have said... Well, sir, we don't normally sell the display shoes, but um, why don't you take a seat and I'll see if they're your size. Oh, right. 
The colour may be a fraction faded, but at least we'll get you off on your holiday with something to wear. Oh. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Thank you very much. You see? A changed man. Had Mr. Welt understood the power of behaviour, Mr. Hapless would have left his shop a contented man, and the subsequent tragedy might never have occurred. You can choose your behaviour to affect every single encounter you have with a member of the public. You can choose your behaviour. Your behaviour is not something you were born with, it's something you choose. How you choose will help or hinder every single transaction. Well, it's obvious, isn't it? And those two didn't do much to help. They're the guilty ones. So if you don't mind, I'm off. A cream bun, Mr. Figgis, or perhaps a chocolate eclair. Could it be that Mr. Figgis' accusation springs from a desire to conceal some guilty secret of his own? You can use your behaviour to help a transaction. You can use your behaviour to hinder a transaction. It was to Mr. Figgis' counter at the post office that Mr. Hapless came shortly after his encounter with Mr. Welt. So why don't we take his place and see for ourselves exactly what sort of behaviour Figgis chose to offer him. Excuse me. <clears throat> Are you serving? <laughs> so I said, if you think that's what we're made of, think again, John. Well, you got to let them know who's boss, haven't you? Excuse me, I've come to collect this pension. Oh, no, no. Can I help you? Yeah, I've, I've come to collect my mother's pension t t today. Well, now, this minute, actually. You see, I I'm going off on holiday. Why hasn't your mother come to collect it herself, then? Well, it's all properly authorised and everything. Yes. No. 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 Can I help you? I've come to collect this pension. Pension's second window down. What? Next counter. Call yourself a public service, you're a public disgrace! I mean, I wouldn't buy a penny stamp in this post office if it was the last one on earth! Is that a are you? Yes, well, I wasn't feeling exactly 100% that day. The professional's behaviour, Mr. Figgis, is a cloak for all his personal problems, prejudices and feelings. Would anyone care to list his mistakes? Yes, I would. me. He didn't acknowledge Mr. Hapless' presence while he was keeping him waiting. And I don't think he had to keep him waiting. A lot of that business was just one-upmanship, to make the customer think he was rather low down on his list of priorities. He didn't look at Mr. Hapless while he was speaking to him. Are you serving? I think you should have addressed him by name. He could have done. Because the pension book was on the counter. When he said, Can I help you? It looked as if he meant, Can I hinder you? He was so busy doing something else. He looked bored and unreceptive when he was listening. If you can call it listening. It was all right when he answered the phone call. But afterwards, he asked the question, Can I help you? For a second time. And what about... Next counter! Is it possible that the charges you make against Mr. Figgers are motivated by a desire to reduce your own responsibility in this lamentable affair? No, no. of course not. Of course not. Absolutely, Absolutely not. not. Good. Then you have learned that when used carelessly, behaviour can be a very dangerous weapon. It can hurt, enrage, wound, perhaps even... No! But how else can behaviour be used? 
Knowing what you know now, sister, would you still meet her out the same treatment to poor Mr. Hapless which you used on that fateful occasion? Well, I suppose not. I might be a little more patient. A little more understanding, perhaps. Gentler. More professional. Patient, understanding, professional. They're usually part and parcel of the same thing. You can use your behaviour to... to help the transaction. Here we have an ordinary fellow, a bit nervous perhaps. And how is he greeted? Next! Over there. He feels unwanted and something of an intruder. A femorensa, right? Yes. He's become a case, a category. He's no longer an individual. You intimidate him. What a simple difference if instead... Good morning. Mr. Hapless, isn't it? Yes, it is. He feels welcome, the subject of your attention. Um, do you think this is absolutely necessary? I find injections Don't very... Don't worry, Mr. Hapless. A lot of people hate injections. I'll tell you what, you count to ten, and I'll be finished before you get there. You see, a simple technique. A smile, the mention of his name, a touch on the arm, and... And he's a different human being. Exactly. Well, sisters, you're a busy woman. Which behaviour on your part would you choose to give you a quicker and easier time? Well, that's obvious. And you have that choice. Look, nice tea party and all that, but uh, I'm a busy man, so if you don't mind. Patience, Mr. Tanner. The pieces of the jigsaw are falling into place. Let's see where you fit in. <laughs> Me? I don't fit in anywhere. Everything you're saying about being cheery with people, well, that's second nature to me. Excuse me. Yes, Gov. What can I do for you? Short back and sides? Extra hole in your belt? Ear piercing while you wait? <laughs> oh, no, no. Is this the airport train? No, Gov. Cool. You're going to need an holiday by the time you get there with that lot. Yeah. Uh, can you tell me where... Oh, blimey. What do you think I am? Encyclopedica Britannica? Any questions, try the inquiry's office. I see. And uh, where's that? Well, they'll tell you that when you get there. <laughs> Come on, you've got to have a laugh. Not at the expense of other people, Mr. Tanner. Did Mr. Hapless enjoy your jokes? Well, shall I call the police now, sir? Damn it, Manners, I am the police! Yes, I know, but... but... So who? Was Mr. Hapless like Caesar, the victim of a multitude of wounds? Or is there a Brutus in our midst? One who dealt the most unkindest cut of all, the coup de gras! Why are you all looking at me? Tell us what happened when Mr. Hapless checked in at the airport, Miss Verstein. So you know. Wasn't it the morning when you'd have to take your father to hospital? It happened. And had you not just broken up with your boyfriend? How did you know? All you needed that day was a tricky passenger. Particularly as he arrived at the check-in desk just as you were taking a call to say that a car had run over your cat. Oh, no. I won't keep you moment, sir. Thank you for letting me know. Goodbye. Good afternoon, sir. Could I please have your ticket? If you'd like to put your cases on the scale. Ah, Mr. Hapless. I'm afraid I have some disappointing news for you. Uh, no, what? I'm afraid your flight has been cancelled. What? Yes. The plane coming from Ephemera has been delayed. So all the passengers on 201 are going to be transferred to 203 first thing in the morning. This is outrageous! It must be very upsetting for you. I, I shall phone the managing director. Well, if you'd like to see our passenger liaison officer, she's waiting in the ambassador's lounge to help anyone with a particular problem. Hmm, well. Do you live near the airport? Uh, well, no, I don't. 
In that case, we can provide free transport to and from your home. I am not going back home again. I see. You prefer to stay nearer the airport. Mm, yes, that's right. Of course. Well, we can provide accommodation at the airport hotel. Or if you prefer somewhere cosier. Yes, thanks. Yes. You can't blame me for the flight being cancelled. I'm blaming you for nothing. Then what am I guilty of? You're guilty of nothing. In spite of your personal problems, in spite of a slightly awkward passenger, and in the face of a very tricky situation, you remembered that you can use your behavior to help a transaction in two ways, verbally and visually. Verbally. Acknowledge people as soon as possible. I won't keep you a moment, sir. Apologize for any delay. Sorry about the delay. Use people's names, whatever you can. Ah, Mr. Hapless. Confirm that you're listening. Don't just stand there, say something. It must be terribly upsetting for you, sir. Check you've understood and agree the next step, and give people a choice where you can. Well, then, we can provide accommodation for you at our airport hotel. Mm. Or, if you prefer somewhere cosier. And visually? Be friendly and welcoming. Good afternoon, sir. Can I please have your ticket? Look at people and be attentive. Nod. Where appropriate, take written notes. Lean forward. Use open gestures, not closed ones. Well, if you prefer to see our passenger liaison officer, she's waiting in the ambassador lounge. What? Look, what he means is, as a customer, would you prefer to be greeted like this? Or like this? Now you're learning, Mr. Tanner. Well, my compliments on the faultless performance, Miss Fairstone. Well, if she didn't do it, who did? But exactly. Yes, yes, he he was unfortunate that nobody's fault that the car which Miss Fairstone provided to take Mr. Hapless to the hotel broke down some half mile from its destination. And Mr. Hapless, who had been goaded, frustrated and enraged for the greater part of the day, arrived sweating and fuming at the charming country hotel where he'd been booked in at the airline's expense. The open arms. <laughs> that's 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 a masterly piece of deduction. Which leads me to the conclusion that there is one person in this room who holds the final piece to our jigsaw. One person who is in possession of the final clue. Where are you going, Mr. Manners? And to what do we owe this visit, Mr. Hapless? Business or pleasure? Business, as in mind your own. Oh, I do beg your pardon, sir. And I'd like to point out that while you are a guest in our hotel, it will be our pleasure. Just, uh, just, just a minute! I have had enough of this flannel to last me a lifetime. I have had chin music up to here. I mean, I am sick of no Mr. Hapless, yes Mr. Hapless, three bags full Mr. Hapless. I mean, I've dropped the message, you know. I know what's being said to me. I understand these things, you know. I mean, listen, why don't you people just say what you mean? Why don't you say go and jump at the lake? Is that what you mean? Is it? Go on, say it, say it. Well, well, why don't you go and jump in the lake, Mr. Hapless? What? Well, Mr. Manners, you accuse. What of? You were faced with the ultimate test. A completely impossible custom of a sort you cannot live with. Yet you did the unforgivable, the unprofessional. You cracked. At the moment of choice, you chose the wrong behavior. You will never prove anything, Mr. Nugget. You haven't got any witnesses. Oh, but I have. The one perfect witness. Who's that? 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 Who's
I don't think we'll be making an arrest after all, Inspector. No arrest, Inspector? My infallible parapsychological methods of interrogation have revealed the truth. It is not for nothing that they call me Nugget of the Yard. These people aren't criminals, Inspector. They're victims of ignorance. They were ignorant of the power of behavior. Well, not, not anymore, anymore, Inspector. Behavior breeds behavior. The way people behave towards you is usually dictated by the way you behave towards them. You can choose your behavior. Your behavior is not something you're born with. It's something you choose every time you deal with the public. How you choose will help or hinder every single transaction. You can use your behavior to help a transaction. Verbally, by greeting people and using their names, and visually, with an attentive look and gesture. Well, now you know the effect your behavior has and the damage it can do. I should really throw the book at the lot of you. But instead, I'll just hand it out. Yeah.